What's happening everyone, Max here. What I do on this channel normally is I react to all different types of people's communication skills and I give you my thoughts. So recently, I've been checking out some F1 drivers. I've been really enjoying it and it's actually made me really curious about the sport. So I thought it would be cool to check out this video that Formula One put out called F1 Drivers Explain F1. So let's get into this. Why is a week in three days? Mainly because... I know that's Carlos. Now I'm going to try my best not to focus on the guys and their personalities. I don't want to get sidetracked. I actually want to come into this video learning a little bit more of the sport. Generally when you get to a track you just need time to, to learn uh, about the car, or the, about the track, about the conditions. We divide the weekend into three parts. Here we would practice, here we would qualify, here we would race. Literally had no idea about any of this. This is all new to me. I didn't realize there was even three days. Super interesting. So the practice day doesn't really mean anything in terms of like their standings, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd imagine, I, and I wonder like how important from a mental perspective is that practice day? Like I wonder if the drivers kind of try to intimidate each other in a way or flex on each other. But obviously they're saying it's a, a way to get comfortable with the track and the car and the technical stuff, but I wonder if there's anything else to it. You can definitely do it all in one day. Um, there's not enough time or energy. Practice is very important to prepare qualifying, but also to prepare mainly the race. I love how Carlos is breaking it down for us very nicely. I'm a visual learner like so many of us. Thank you, Carlos. F1 points are awarded by the position, obviously. Position. Uh, if you win a race, you get 25 points. Mm. The biggest gap between the points is um, in the higher positions. So mm. from second to third um, is, is quite a big gap as well. But then it gets closer and if you finish 10th, you get one point. And we also have a point for the fastest lap of the race. Valtteri Bottas is going for the fastest. The fastest lap. Interesting. So that throws a curveball into things. And okay, so you have to finish in the top 10 in order to be awarded the points for the fastest lap, I'd, I'd imagine. Either way, that's very interesting. I wonder what the sort of F1 traditionalists thought about this new rule and if more people were on board with it or more people were kind of not feeling it. But what do you guys think? It seems like a pretty cool rule, but I guess there's a risk involved. Again, I don't know anything about driving, but I'd imagine it gives drivers who are behind in points an opportunity to make up. So how many points do they get? One. Okay. An additional point. Gotcha. Okay. Sometimes you might need to compromise your strategy to put fresh tires at the end of the race when you have less fuel in the car, when the car is lighter. So you might try and interesting for it, but there's always a bit of risk doing that. Yeah, yeah gets 25. I called it. That's what I thought. Uh, second, 18, fifth. Let me go back. Does this this guy doesn't even? I feel like he doesn't even know the rules. Uh, second, 18, 15, um, and from there, tent get one, and everybody can come. <laughs> Sectors. Who is that dude? Who is that dude? First sector, basically we call it the, the fast sector because you have a whole long straight and a very fast corner that is flat out. I'm liking Carlos's explanations a lot here. Guys reminding me of like my passionate science teacher in grade eight. The second sector becomes a bit uh, twistier and medium speed corners and the third sector is actually pretty slow. So it's just easier for everyone to say, okay, he has something happening in sector one, or he has something happening in other oh, Interesting. And Apex is... Oh, this dude, I've gotten a lot of requests to check out this dude. I think his name's Daniel Ricardo, if I'm not mistaken. Is he Canadian? He's from Quebec? Apparently he's got a big personality. I've seen his name pop up on YouTube a few times. And Apex is... How do you even explain Okay, this? not Canadian, no. Things that don't really, but okay, so let's use this one. Uh, so the Apex is the point of the corner where you want to like close the corner to then give you the best trajectory to exit the corner in the fastest ways. An apex is the point you gotta reach in the middle of the corner. Really like a lot of like young, young looking drivers as well. Not really sure what's going on with this apex thing. I'm gonna have to think about this and watch this again. But Daniel, by the way, seems incredibly relatable. Just seems like he's got a great personality that just feels very, uh, easy to connect with, you know? You want to come out a little bit higher up top 
to then flow through and then come out like that. Really cool. Uh, a trajectory where you can come late into the corner and kind of slingshot out. That is what we call an apex, the point where we kind of close the corner. Right, there's a real science to it and it sounds like there's a lot of variables like that dude was just saying. And I wonder if there's like sort of a, a negative to hitting the apex too much. I just learned something myself actually. Or confused myself even more, I don't know. Yeah, so the thing that strikes me about Daniel, he doesn't take himself too seriously. You know, he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's a little bit of a goofball, which is great. Speaking of guys who take themselves seriously, what do you think? Does Lewis take himself seriously? Understeer is when you turn and the um, car doesn't turn, basically. Uh, it's the front tire side. It's when you're, you know, you're turning and the car stops. The, the rear of the car often pushes the car forwards and um, it's just not, the, the car's not rotating at the, at the rate in which you're putting the angle in. Like, I don't know if it's because I know Lewis Hamilton is like a champ and he's kind of like dominated the sport in, in a way, but like watching this video, I think there's just a different intensity to, the, intensity to him. Like that's a sense I get, like he takes this seriously. Understeer and oversteer, the two famous words in an engineering debrief. Uh, understeer is when the car uh, is not responding. This dude like literally just got back from his prom night, it looks like. A lot of young guys on the grid. The grid, that's another thing I picked up reading your comments, the grid. Feeling that pink whip though, I'm feeling that. Sorry if you don't call it whips in, in F1, that might be a little bit of an insult. So you let me know about that too. Understeer is when you turn the steering wheel into a corner and the front of the car is sliding. So the car is, is going straight more than you want to. Crazy. And um, oversteer is the opposite, is that when you turn the steering wheel, the rear end slides and the car turns more than, than you want it to. Hard sport. Man, you have to have so much control, huh? I wonder how much strength that takes in, in like their forearms and their wrists and their body in general, right? I, I wonder what their diet and their, their sort of their health regimens like and especially when it comes to just being alert and mentally aware. I'd imagine your diet and exercise have a big impact on that. But in particular, I wonder how much stress it puts on their forearms. When we complain about oversteer, will generally mean that the rear is moving too much um, and it's moving out of line, so uh, yeah. Okay, so both understeer and oversteer are not good, but it sounds like you'd rather get into an understeer situation than an oversteer. That's what I'm gathering from this. An oversteer is when you turn and it turns too much and usually overpowers the rear so the rear steps out and you have to correct. Good, concise explanation from Lewis. That's really all I needed to know, right? An oversteer is when you turn and it turns too much. That's it. When he meant understeer and it was understeer. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was quite a funny joke, but apparently it wasn't that funny. I like that guy. I like that guy. He's kind of nerdy, huh? In a good way. Lock up is when you basically break too hard and you exceed the amount of grip available. So the tire basically stops and locks and it like and you kind of uh, get smoke because of the rubber. So it, it's basically when you break too hard. Yeah, he's, he's a character, huh, Ricardo? I like him. See, this is what, to me, what's fascinating about the sport, the personalities, which is why I love MMA and UFC so much. It's because of the personalities and the matchups and the competitiveness, part of why I like it, and the rankings. That's another cool thing I like about this sport is this like point system and the ranking system. So I'd love to learn more about that. But the personalities, right? Even Carlos, he's kind of got a funny personality. I'd like to explore his personality a little bit more. And then Daniel Ricardo seems like a character. Lewis, obviously a big personality in the sport. I've checked out Max Verstappen. You tell me, do the personalities add a real cool element for you or is it mostly just like I love racing I love just a hundred percent watching the sport itself so lock up uh, is basically happens when you brake because we don't have uh, an anti-locking brake system like you do on your road cars so basically if I use this little demonstration here the this guy reminds me of like a couple of my buddies this guy right here he seems like a pretty light character I like him basically can flat spot the part of the tire where it stops rotating and it's could create quite a big vibration while you're driving. That's got to be pretty scary. And the tire is not rounded anymore. You've taken off a piece of tire because it's been... It's your science it's teacher over here. Gotcha. Carlos, man, I like Carlos. He's uh, He's got a funny personality to me. I feel like he's got like this subtle self-deprecation. Very subtle. 
and there is sort of an intensity to him, but at the same time, he seems like he's got a really good sense of humor. So he's an interesting one. The rubber on that point starts to get chewed up and you get what we call a flat spot after a lockup. And then you get vibrations, which isn't fun. Yeah, I think that was Daniel Ricardo. If I've been saying it wrong the whole time, if it's a different guy completely, my bad. But he seems to be the lightest with this whole thing and, and sort of adding the most humor into it just kind of makes it fun. Like he's not taking it too, too seriously. He also seems pretty comfortable in front of the camera. So yeah, I'd like to see an interview with him and maybe do a full on analysis on him. I'd also like to do Carlos Sainz again and Lewis Hamilton again, and maybe a couple of the other guys that I mentioned, you let me know. There's a dude named Kimmy that I'm definitely gonna have to check out. The guy cannot be touched by any member of the team or any, any fan. And to make sure that there's no cheaters, basically. This is a pretty cool video. Like, I'd like to learn more. I'd like, I'd like it if they dug a little bit deeper into the actual point system, and like that would be interesting for me. And like, do those points carry over week to week? So again, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. The lockup and all this other stuff, it's cool to know, but I don't think I need like 15 explanations on it. Yeah, well, is it that more or less? Yeah, it's okay. All right, cool little introduction. Definitely piqued my interest even more. If there's other videos I should watch on my own time, please do let me know. I'd like to get to know the sport a little bit more. I'm certainly interested. It's, it's the personalities that brought me here, that's for sure. If you want to watch my uncut reaction, you can. It's on my Patreon page. I've included that link in my description below. I've also got all my uncut reactions of the four F1 drivers that I've so far covered on my Patreon page. So if you want to watch those uncuts, you can do that there. Otherwise, the edited versions are on my YouTube. Other than that, my name is Max. Appreciate you being here. This has been a fun ride so far. Did not mean for that to come out like that. Talk to you soon. Peace.